So we're here in the last day here, the Lenaro Connect uh, 2017 here in uh, San Francisco. And yep. how did it go? Uh, I, actually, I think this has been the best Connect we've done for me personally and just generally. I've managed to have a really good mixture of committee meetings, of birds of a feather sessions. I've managed to attend a bunch of technical sessions and um, I've had some good meetings with members and prospective members. Plus, it's a really nice place to come. So we've had some, some good social events and, you know, I've spent time with Lanaro folks and others. Um, just friends, really. There's a lot of friends here, you know. So it's, a, it's a, been a great event. I've been here since last Friday. I've been here a week now. And I'm flying home tonight. I'm happy to go. But, uh, uh, but it's been a really, really good week. Very busy week, but, uh, but a good week. Productive week here in the Silicon Valley. Yep, exactly, exactly. Yeah, beautiful and sunny. And the hotel, they've refurbished and uh, done a good job. Really comfortable place to have the event with the, the rooms have worked and all of that. You know, it's so, good. Uh, now it's seven years. Seven years. I can't believe that. Um, five years was a bit of a surprise, but the last two. What happened to the last two, Charbax? How come it happened so fast? I Suddenly it was, it's seven. I think it was Trump, the campaign. And everything. <laughs> don't it don't just... get me to say anything political, Charbax. No, I'm not doing Brexit? that. Brexit? Should we talk about? No, Brexit? we shan't talk no. about. It. Let's let's keep this okay. nice and friendly. <laughs> okay, but there, the there, there. did it a little bit start with the? There was some attention around the mobile stuff. And then all these other things, yeah. now there's some new ideas. You have some new ideas. You yes, have, you're I, yes about I do. So, so in terms of the broad sweep of things, mobile is important but maturing. And actually the work with Google and Treble, and you saw the keynotes, you just see where we're going there, and that's great. That's really good, the stuff that's Google really there. wants to have Linaro help with the whole treble stuff, right? Yeah, they, they recognize the part we can play. Obviously, there's the, the wider partnership and the and the guys like Qualcomm and Heike and the rest of it. And so that's mobile. That's, that's very mobile. relevant yeah, for yeah, mobile. Yeah. Um, but in other areas, so at Enterprise, having a day center day was really good. And Martin did a great job pulling it all together. And it's, it's, it's showing where we've got to, you know, from us... Well, leg, uh, the enterprise group was the first group we formed, and that really changed Lenaro. And adding more groups, you know, has really broadened what Lenaro does. But for enterprise, there's a lot of there's you know all that work is coming together, and you're seeing some great systems. And uh, so the data center day was really really good. The other thread that's been running through what I so obviously as the CTO, I like new stuff, old stuff done. You know, let's move on and a um, couple of new things that are really good. One of them is HPC. So the work that uh, Kanta Vicaria, who's on my, I only have a little team, Kanta's one of them. She's on your team with the strategy? Yes. For so my, my office, okay, right. So my office, my, I have a little office of the CTO. It sounds grand, um, but there's three of us, three of them. There's Kanta Vicaria, there's Rob Herring, who's more on the kernel Android side, and there's Nicholas Petra, who's been working to make Linux really small. He's trying to get it to run in the smallest memory, fo out of flash, smallest memory footprint, flat How memory map. How small did he get it so far? Oh dear, I have to cut. Well, he's, I, really, I'm, he's, he's a little quickly, shy. He's That's very okay. Going from one thing to the other. Yeah, but he, I can't quite remember. He's using. You should look at his talk on video. He's using an STM Cortex M part. Uh, Running Linux in the Cortex M. Yeah. Um, and he's compiling it FDPIC. So basically, it's a flat memory map. You can have uh, you can have loadable images. So. The kernel is running out of flash and then it's booting in a small amount of memory. I think that I think that part has 640k, but it's so he's using external memory. I think it's about 800k running um, a very simple environment, you know, simple script. So you can basically boot it and do ls and you know cat slash proc slash cpu stuff. That could be a very well, revolutionary for some kind yeah, of yeah. Well, what, what he's um, where he's coming from is that Linux has got a, is very rich. It's rich in device drivers. It's rich in applications, and so um, you can enable it down to a pretty small footprint. Um, the problem he's facing is that persuading the kernel developers that that making changes that don't actually benefit them but benefit 
the real embedded guys are worthwhile. But he's he's doing well. It's getting, a lot of his stuff is being merged in the next merge window or this merge window. So that's good. So good stuff. And you should watch his video. It explains what does, he's doing. Does he have strong opinions about the strategy? Well, he cares deeply. This he's is on your team. Yeah, yeah. He he's um, this whole IoT L IoT Linux has been something he's been pursuing. He's been working at it, and persuading people, and uh, yeah, of course. Is it an alternative to Zephyr, or is it useful for Zephyr? Well, it's useful because it keeps Zephyr in its place. So Zephyr is a very small Artos, um, and it it shouldn't get too big. It shouldn't add everything into it. It shouldn't try to be everything. So it's nice to have a little crossover. And the then Linaro is very active in Zephyr. Yeah, yeah. That they. Um, the idea behind Zephyr is that it's um, it's kind of like the Linux kernel of the embedded world, and uh, the key thing about it isn't the code base; it's actually the maintainership and pulling all that together. Uh, and the code base is coming along, um, and I, it's a kind of where I thought it would be after about a year's effort. Uh, companies are starting to well, they're supporting it, and they're starting to talk about releasing versions to support their process. So Zephyr's going well. That's had the light group. It's been used a lot in this new open source foundries. Yeah, because it's a useful IoT client. It runs on a tiny little yeah, yeah, spot yeah. And all you need is um, Bluetooth and a little bits and pieces, and then it can run a bit more, you know. So I think it's worked out really well that one. And uh, so the open source foundries is going to be a, uh, an exciting thing. Yeah, on it's exciting. I, it's when I opportunity. When we started Lenaro, I hope there's a couple of besides the um, collaboration thing. I was hoping that there would be some business opportunities and come, you know that's one part of it. And so this is kind of where that came from. It's an opportunity and. The thing is that Lenaro's mission is about this collaboration, so it doesn't quite fit in Lenaro because we don't want to pollute that mission, as it were. You know, we, we want to work together, and once you get products in there, it gets yeah, it gets, can get a little sticky. But what they've done has been really great. So spinning that out as a separate business opportunity makes sense. The other area I wanted to encourage, and you've seen a little bit of that here is the relationship with universities and academia and the maker community. So the 96 boards open hours, I didn't really get to see much of it, but there was a room full of students. It's uh, packed and packed. Packed and packed, and the professors are given them, you know, they, they cancel lectures to let them be here. You know, I'm, I'm as passionate as Mad Dog about the young graduates and students, because they're the entrepreneurs of tomorrow. They're the ones who are going to do things I can't imagine. So it was really good to see that. We'll probably do more around that. So, but anyway, the, with Lenaro, I wanted that relationship. I wanted that the, the business opportunities, the rest of it. And um, that's kind of where associate membership is coming in as well. The idea We want to engage with the wider community. If you look at the history of Lenaro, um, it's been about the ARM ecosystem getting together and solving problems together. Now it's becoming much more about involving everyone in that ARM ecosystem, the wider, you know, the wider ecosystem, the wider members of that. So it's, it's about widening that participation. So with the associate uh, system, there might be uh, dozens or hundreds more kind of like members. We, we don't know. We've been taking it pretty steadily. You know, we've not we've not assumed there'll be thousands or hundreds or tens. But we've talked to a lot of companies who are interested, universities are interested, and we'll, we'll, we'll build it up slowly because you're kind of building around something and you want to be able to scale it. But I think it's an interesting and exciting opportunity. And uh, maybe next you'll have uh, Audi and uh, Fiat, Ford, uh, all these so, companies. Yeah, Why are you no, doing automotive? What's going on with that's that? That's a good question. So, I, so, as I say, I'm the CTO, I like new things. I've spent the last year or so um, talking with a bunch of folks in automotive, I'm convinced that we could do something to help. So, the thing about ARM in automotive, it's already used a lot, but, our, but ARM works well in ecologies where there are standards, where there, you know, and we think there's a bunch of stuff that we could be joining in with. We, you know, you don't always invent, we don't always invent standards, you follow them uh, and stuff. So we've had a big automotive presence here this week. 
and a lot of discussions around automotive, including in the technical steering committee. And basically, we're going to be doing more. So it's one of those watch this space. Because what is the free uh, free software foundation ah. doing, and what is Linaro going to do in this space? Like. What well, is your the role Linux in their Foundation role? has Linux. the automotive grade Linux. In fact, Dan Couchy was here from there and we had a couple of conversations. And what they're doing is great. You know, they're, they're stuff around ADAS and, and um, you know, um, infotainment's really good. And, and they're, you know, it's actually in cars, I believe. So that's great. There's a wider thing of what does the whole system look like. But, but, and the issue, is, one of the issues to solve is the fact that vehicles, and not just cars, ships, boats, planes, drones, you know, you name it, uh, trucks, they, they, there's a whole bunch of functionality they're going to need. And the only way to get that functionality is to include open source, right? There's, it's there, it's in open source, it's happening in open source. It's part of the, the drift of technology from um, the data center, really. And once you add in the need for over-the-air updates and, you know, the car's a mobile data center or a robot with wheels or whatever. So the issue is really how you design a system to mix high criticality systems, like your braking systems, your safety systems, with open source systems that are doing some other stuff, you know. Um, so it's a very interesting place to, to research and uh, we're really mapping the territory at the moment. We're looking around at what's happening and thinking what layers and APIs and systems and technologies around and how it goes, so yeah. Because self-driving cars use some kind of computer vision and there's AI, well, okay. what is Lenora going to do if with this? You, if you think about it, um, you need to have 360 degree vision, LiDAR, low-end radar, infrared, you know, uh, and you need to integrate that view with a bunch of machine learning that recognizes objects, tracks them, and does stuff. Now, the early parts of, the, of this are kind of like keeping in the lane, accident avoidance, but um, so there's a bunch of what are now enterprise class software that needs to run on the car. You can't afford to run all that in the cloud because, you know, your car's driving along and the connection goes down for a, you know, a few hundred yards and your car can't make a decision. So there's a lot of local decision making going on. So it's a very, very interesting area of computing. So in um, AI in general, Linaro is going to be involved because yeah. it was one of the keynotes that said you can't just have China compete with the US or with some other. Uh, well, and I, I'm on not AI, quite sure. It needs to be an open source AI, otherwise, we will well, be in know, trouble. Come on. My, my DNA is open source, so I'm going to say, you know, that's, where, that, that's where the research is, where it's going. Yes, there's a bunch of stuff that we're looking at around AI. AI is a very loose term, it, it's quite fuzzy and meaningless. There's new areas and new SSCs Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Are. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm sure that the, the ARM ecosystem is, is thinking about it. And if you think about it, one of the key attributes of the ARM ecosystem is hardware acceleration. Um, the reason why the ARM ecosystem competes so well in ecosystems is you get parallel evolution. You haven't just got one way of doing things. Companies are all trying different things. They're trying intelligent fabric, they're trying this accelerator, uh, and you know, AI is not just, it's not about GPUs, I won't be about GPUs, but it's about deep, deep pipelines of processing, uh, you know, doing transformations across deep pipes of data. Going back to car vision, there's a bunch of processing near the near the sensor, right? It's like the human. The human human brains, human eyeballs do a bunch of processing and then your main brain integrates the results. Well, think of a, an, a car architecture that kind of does that. But then think of security and think of um, the safety side of that, you know. It's, it's interesting. I had a lot of very interesting conversations. Cool, so looking forward to the next video and the next Linaro Yeah, Connect. well, Charbax, you'll be there. It's in six months, it's in Hong Kong. Um, right now, I need to recover. I need to go home, walk the dog, relax. But I've had a really good time. I'm glad to be flying home. I love California, but I'm glad to be going home and, and tired but happy.
Are you going to post the dog on Twitter, on Google Plus, or? I do on Google Plus. I right. tend to post amongst friends. The dog is a Dalmatian called Sid, or Sydney, Sid or Sydney. So yeah, I post there. In fact, you should see him. You see him on yours. We're friends. Okay. <laughs>